First of all, let's go through the uh, types and uh, expressions and uh, things like that. I do a quick re review on all of them, and then we're going to start the logic. And as usual, we're going to have a quiz on it, and it's there you're coming in. <clears throat> of course, it's, we're not going to complete it, but uh, <clears throat> we're going to complete it next week. So, first thing first, the common types that we have in uh, in C language. Um, characters, integers, floats, doubles. Um, characters are a little, a little bit tricky. The um, reason is that they are usually confused uh, by mistake. They are taken as, as characters. They're, they're, people think that they are actually variables to hold characters, where they are actually integers holding a very small um, value of, uh, of an integer, you know, with being minus 128 and positive 127. And uh, <clears throat> uh, to demonstrate what I meant by that, I created two different uh, characters over the one CH1 and the other one CH2. And CH1 has 65 in it, and CH2 has character A in it. Okay? In the first print statement over here, I'm, I'm printing CH1. Percent C. Percent C is asking the printf to print the shape of a character with an ASCII code. What is the ASCII code? 65. So I'm saying print the character with the ASCII code 65. And then I'm going to say print the ASCII code itself. One is the integer, the other one is a character. Okay? Got it? Okay, so let's run this program. Step by step. Put this over here, put this one over here. So, uh, <clears throat> oops. All right, so it's going to, the value 61 is going to be there. Character A is going to be in that one. And the first thing that it prints, it's, as you see, it actually shows A because 65 is the ASCII code of A. So I'm saying print the code of the character whose ASCII code, print the shape of a character whose ASCII code is 65, A is going to get printed. And the second one, I am putting single quote A. And if I print CH2, you will see that the results are identical. Okay? I just want to show you that a single quote around the shape of, an, of a character, it's for us because we cannot memorize ASCII code. So if you put a character and you put single quotes around it, that's actually an integer. So this line 6, this means actually 65. Are we okay with this? All right? Just remember that, okay? It's the printf that prints the character for you. The character itself, variable, only holds the ASCII code. So you are actually telling to printf, I want the character with the ASCII code 65 to get printed. And that's how it works. Are we okay with this? All right. Now to put more emphasis on that, we're going to do this. I'm going to say, okay, that CH2 that I had A in it, if I add 1 to the value, it's an integer, right? Then what's going to be the outcome? If I actually do something like this, then what's going to be the outcome? BN66. Very simple and straightforward. BN66. Are we okay with that? All right. So, so, so if I run it, that's what we're going to get. BN66. Are we okay? For the other things that we have, we have specific sp uh, format specifiers for them that we can use. So if I want to print an integer, that's percent %d, percent %d prints an integer. If I want to print a float, that's percent %f. If I want to print um, a double, that's percent %lf. Now let's go through that and see what happens. Okay, so one more time, running through it. Going through it one by one. That's A. 
and now integer is printed one, two, three. Now take a look at this, please. What do you see? What is that thing? That's a one, right? Did I set any one in here? That's what I was talking about. I told you double values, floating point values are not precise. Never trust the values inside. Because it's, it's a calculated value, it's not an absolute value. Not absolute by mean of absolute value in mathematics. It's not, it's not like an integer. An integer, when you put 50, it's 50. It cannot become 51. But when you put 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 in a float, because the precision is not high enough, at the end you might have some little piece extra. Why? Because this guy is high. Just accept this for now. I don't want to go through the details, okay? But now take a look at the double one. If I print the double, what happens? Now it's double precision, right? So the precision is twice as high, right? Which means, it doesn't mean that there is no one over there, it's just the one is here now. <laughs> okay, it's just the precision is higher. It's still, you still, if you have two values, you can never be sure that if you compare them, the, the computer is going to tell you this, the, the, the values are the same, because they're not. Are we okay? Are we okay one? Are we okay two? Okay. Now, talking about characters themselves, I have some kind of a challenge for you to see if you can actually tell me what's going on here. This is the same thing that I had with the character CH165. So if I run this program, well, no, that's what we're going to get. We're going to get 65 printed over there. Let me just make this a little bigger. So is it at the end of the class, can you see this or it's too small? You can't? Okay. Properties. That's better. Is it good? All right. So now if I do CH plus equal 10, what does it mean? It means CH is equal CH plus 10, which means 65 becomes 75. So it's A. B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K. Fantastic. So we know that I added 10 to the ASCII code. What I'm going to see over here is K printed, correct? Now, uh, lowercase values are they have higher, it doesn't matter, but just letting you know. Lowercase values, they have higher value of ASCII code, okay? So the ASCII code of a lowercase a is bigger than an ASCII code of an uppercase a. Doesn't make any difference, but just letting you know. Now, can anybody tell me what's going to be the output of line 9? Pardon me? Yes, thank you. Next time, I'm going to put a price on it. Sorry. <laughs> I just want to say 2% for the test. If you, I do that every now and then. Remember that. Like every now and then, there's something that is very challenging. Why lowercase k? It's not usually. It's always the same. The difference between lowercase a and an uppercase a is the exact same difference between a lowercase k and an uppercase k. Right? So when I find, it's just me being lazy. When I find the difference between the two, and I add that one to a k, then k becomes lowercase. I said lowercase a minus lower uppercase a. Whatever the difference is, I add that one to the code of uppercase k, it becomes lowercase k. All right? Uh, so we're casting over there, right? There is no casting. It's just, I put parentheses around it. It's... It's this. In this case, I don't know, 5 minus 2. That's not casting. Just, okay. All right? I'm not doing magic, people. This is, okay, let's do that plus equal. Let's do. Okay. 
So if I come over here, you know that I can highlight and see what the value is. If I look at this value, the value is simply 32. So if you add the number 32 to any uppercase value, it becomes lowercase. Because I was lazy to do that math, I, did the, I let the computer do it for me. Okay, I simply could do it by myself and just put 30, 32 over there. But anyways, the result is going to be, nevertheless, the result is going to be lowercase k, which is 107 as ASCII code. Are we okay? Usually I give this example, and by the end of it, everybody understands exactly what a character is, is in C language. There's no magical thing. Character doesn't hold anything special. It's just an integer, okay? It's the printf who does the magic. You tell to printf to print the shape. That is percent C. Okay? I want to pose. <laughs> All right. All right? This will be on GitHub. I don't know why people like to take pictures. The source code is on the GitHub. You have access to it. But it's fine. Do it. Whoever wants to take picture or record or whatever you do it, that's fine. All right, so that's that one. That's something that I want to uh, point out. Uh oh, uh oh, stop. Okay, good. All right, so next thing. Constant values. Constant values are just to make something constant so it doesn't get modified, okay? When you have a value and you don't want the value to get modified, that's what a constant is. Now, there are known values, constant values in different types of things like, I don't know, you want to know what is like G, 9.81. If you want to see what is pi, it's 3.141592, whatever you want. Like you don't want these values to change because it's by nature they are constant you make a constant value with it. Like, uh, I want to say taxes, but they change every 10, 15 years. But if you didn't want to change, you could make, make tax 0.13, for example, in Ontario, if it makes sense. Um, but anyways, uh, a double value is not changeable. You cannot actually change it, okay? Uh, sorry, a, a constant value. So that pi that I created over there is a constant and cannot be changed, which means if I if I un un uh, uncomment this one, you will see a red thingy comes down over here. It says expression, expression, expression must be a modifiable value. You see that? L value, left value, which means you are trying to add one to something that is constant. So if you have a constant value and you need to do some calculations and changes, one of the best ways is actually to put it in a regular value. They are read-only values. You don't change them. You can always read them. So I create a vari variable PI. That V doesn't mean anything. I just put V over there because I wanted to point that it's variable. You can't change. Or modifiable, okay? And I'm saying VPI is set to VI. Now I'll print the value. It's got to be the same. If I add one to it, then I can. All right? So if you want to change the value of a constant value, you always copy it into a regular variable, and then you can do whatever you want to do with it. Are we okay with this? Are we okay? Questions? Suggestions? Objections down to this point? Nothing? Goody, goody. What? There was a question? Ooh. Never mind. Go ahead. My beautiful friend, I, I bet you cannot hear what you do. <laughs> Louder. Oh, use your opera voice. Go ahead. So I was about to ask you, mm -hmm. when you put V to capital P-I, could I just look at the double variable to see where you got it from? Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, okay. So you, so you answer your own question. Okay. Yeah. Beautiful. Okay, thank you. Perfect. Goody, goody. All right, so what's the next thing we want to talk about? <clears throat> simple calculations, simple inputs, and simple printouts. Let's say I want to K 
calculate the area of a rectangle. To do so, I need a height and I need a width, right? And then I need to calculate the area, right? Whenever you have such a thing, such a uh, problem to solve, have the variables, the things that, that, that are going to change, and you make variables for them. So what happens is that the very first thing that you do, you say, okay, I have a double width. If it's an integer, you want to make it an integer, fine. But if you want to have partials, then you put double. So you get a double width, double height, and double area. And then you have to think, okay, I want to get these things from the user. So which parts of these things are coming from the user? Width and height, right? And area is what I'm calculating, correct? So what you need to do, you need to ask the user to give you the, the width, right? You cannot just run the program, stand silence, like you go in front of others and just look at their face and don't say anything. They think you're nuts, right? So, so we have to make our program actually tell that we want to do something, which means uh, prompting, this is called prompting the, the user for the value that they want to enter. So we're going to say, please enter the width of the rectangle. Fine. And I'm not going to new line. Why? Because I want the cursor to blink right over here. And right in here, I want the user to enter whatever they want to enter. Then I'm using another function of standard input output that is scan formatted. Now, what does scan formatted do? Scan formatted reads from the keyword the way you want. It's LF means double, so read as a double and put it in the address of width. That's what happens. If I want to have this eraser, or what, what do you call these things, by the way? Huh? Eraser? Okay. If I want this eraser on that table, I'm going to say, could you please put this eraser on that table? It's fine. But if I say, could you please put this eraser and just stop there? She won't know where to put it, right? Anytime you want to put something somewhere, you have to tell the thing, the software, the person who's getting it, the, the, the function is getting it, where that thing is. And this sign over here that I never want you to call it ampersand, that's called address of. Never ever call it an ampersand. That is called address of, okay? And mention it like that because if you say ampersand, that doesn't mean anything. It's not going to fit in here. You're not going to learn it. If you want to learn something, say its meaning all the time. So I'm going to say scan formatted. Well, now you can, we know it's all formatted, you don't need to measure. So you can say scan at double and put it in address of width. Okay? Which means it just tells us width is somewhere in memory and it has an address. Okay? How do I extract the address of a variable? I put an ampersand in front of it. That's how it works. Right? Okay? All right? Okay, so scan a double and put it in the address of width. So it's going to scan a double and put it in the address of width. I'll do the exact same thing after that and put the next one in the height, which means I'm going to, oh, ask, enter the height of the rectangle, and then I'm going to say scan a double and put it in the address of height. Now I have the width and the height, I can do the math, and I can actually multiply the two and put the value in area. Now I have the area of the rectangle, right? And now I have it, I'm going to print it out and tell the user what the result would be. Are we okay with this? So I'm going to say the area of the rectangle is, and in this placeholder a double is going to get printed. Which double? The double that is coming as the first argument after the, the format. And that's going to get printed over there. And if I run this beautiful program of mine, this is what I'm going to get. Width of the rectangle, 12. Height of the rectangle, 34.5. And, well, okay. And that's going to be the, the area of the rectangle. All zeros over there for six. Six digits of the decimal point. That's by default. That's how it prints it. Yes. Huh? <laughs> One more time? No, so. Oh, I'm gonna say I'm gonna say twelve centimeters over there. Yeah. Okay. It, 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 it specify. 
Yeah. yeah. Okay, that's a beautiful question. Remember that I told you computer is dumb as a doorknob? Yeah. Treat it that way. If you are telling, read a double, did you say over there, I'm going to put centimeters after this? No. Ta-da! You're just saying a double. It means just a double. That's a beautiful question, people. Computer has zero intelligence. Okay? It doesn't know what a unit even is. You know what a unit is yard or centimeter or inches computer doesn't know anything it just needs a double you put a double it reads a double done nothing else is accepted okay not only that i put over there 12 right 12 could be a double too if i had an integer and i would put 12.5 it would hang because point doesn't mean anything for an integer although it's a double number but because integer doesn't have a point it would hang scan it wouldn't work properly Okay? Yes. Oh, that's easy. That's called formatting. I wanted to tell next, but just, just you asked for it. So if you want two decimal over there, you just put point 0.2. It means I want only two of them to be shown. But <laughs> listen, this has nothing to do with scanning. Scan, you cannot force somebody to only get two decimal points after the thing. Okay? So let's remember at this point. For now, you don't know what formatting in ScanF is. The only thing that we should learn is that when you are printing, the values over here mean something. You can change the format of printing. For now, don't put anything in ScanF. Sometimes I make these noises, and believe me, these noises really work, like whistling, hitting the wall, screaming. Suddenly everybody wakes up, and they remember exactly what happened that, after that stupid thing that Farda did. And it somehow goes into your long-term memory. It works. So I'm using that tool. My apologies. Anyway, so again, when you are printing, formatting works. Okay? You can format it. When you are reading, formatting means something else that we're going to talk about later. Okay? So um, I knew that, because usually after this question comes, what if I want user to enter numbers that it's only, there are only two digits, not three? OK? So if they put three, we could do that. Well, we don't want to talk about it now. OK? So now, you see that all those zeros over there? So let's make it three, if you don't mind. OK? So I'm just going to stop this. And run it one more time, Controller 5. So 1, 2.345, and in here we're going to 23.4567, and that's what the output is. Are we okay? Yes? Um, if wit was an integer in the program, mm -hmm. and someone put in like 12.5, then scanf will hang. It will say like that. It, it won't say anything. Scanf will do un, unaccepted, un, unexpected stuff, okay. undefined, the, so down to this point. It will, it will, if, you, if, if user enters 12.345, scanf keeps reading until it can't anymore. So it reads 1 and 2, and then when it reaches to point, it stops. 1 and 2 will go in an integer, and then point stop stays in your keyboard. Waits for the next scanf to come. So it's, it's called buffered entry. We'll talk, about, we'll talk about it later, okay? That's... Okay, we are doing programming now. Soon we're going to learn how to do foolproof programming. Programming, foolproof programming, two different things. Now we think, we are assuming, the user sitting behind the computer using our program is a sane person. That will never happen, ever. Ever. When you are writing a program, the person who's sitting behind your program trying to do work with it, you should consider him or her the most stupid person in the world which if you are that person running your own program you will be even working with your own program <coughs> writing a foolproof program is a very difficult thing to do in real life in real life around say what <coughs> my experience 20 30 percent of your brain cells are going to be wasted to do business logic 
For example, you're running an accounting program, 20%, 30% of the time, you're going to actually work on accounting. How to do this and that, find out what is the profit and stuff like that. 70 to 80% of your effort is going to be dealing with this stupid thing this user is going to enter into the keyboard and predict it and tell you, say, no, not that, do this. The logic of dealing with unpredictable user, which there are, is much more, the user interfaces are much more difficult to write than business logic. Business logic is a logic. You have values, you have logic, you get results. Life is beautiful. User interface, you have logic, user is stupid, you suffer. And that's what it is, okay? You have to remember that, all right? Sorry to mention it this way, because I cannot sugarcoat this thing, because this is real, okay? And you have to remember that. All right, what do we have? Okay, so again, if I do control F5 over here and say, and I put over here 10, and I hit enter, this happens. Ta -da! That's the number, okay? Why? I'm not gonna explain why, but we haven't written a foolproof program. Soon we're gonna learn how to do that, but not now, okay? <clears throat> Are we okay? All right, beautiful. Now that we talked about formatting in here, okay, let's talk about um, things that you can do with printf uh, with, uh, oh, not that one. <clears throat> with what we call scape sequences, special characters that you want to print, okay? Special characters that you want to print. Now, what are these special characters? For example, you see that backslash A over there? That's alarm. It makes your, pro, well, your computer beep, okay? So when you print that one, Okay, so it's gonna say hello, and then, you heard that? That was the backslash A. Any play you have backslash A, it goes Okay, so, like, like very old people who always like to say stories, when I come to these things, I say stories like that too. And it actually helps every now and then. You see that alarm thing, lots of people like, when they, please enter the width, you could have put an alarm, right? It would say, so they enter something. And then please put the width, and they put something, right? It looks beautiful. I did that once, okay? And then I put the program, it was a data entry program. And there was this lab of 50 people entering data. <laughs> they started my program, and then they wanted to go nuts because the whole thing was, like, be careful, okay? These things, especially audible stuff, they sound very cute and nice when you're sitting by yourself three o'clock in the morning in your room. But when it's in a lab of 400 people doing data entry, just is nuts. Okay, careful, all right? All right, so that's that. Backslash B moves one step back. Okay, so essentially it's gonna print A, B, C, D. Okay, and then the cursor goes back under D and it's gonna print E, F, G, which means D is going to get overwritten by E, F, G, okay? So, so essentially what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do it like this, so I'm gonna say C, V, B, uh, copy it, and here I'm going to do this. I'm gonna break it down into pieces So you see what I mean. Okay, so line six, seven, eight is actually line five in three steps, right? So if I run this pro, if I continue running the program, let's see if it actually recompiles it or not. Okay, see, it says A, B, C, E, F, G. What happened to D? This is what happened. First, it printed that. You see where the cursor is now? Now backslash B moves the cursor one back. See where the cursor went? And now it's going to print EFG and overwrite it. Okay? That's what backslash B does. 
What is backslash R? Backslash R is carriage return. Brings the cursor all the way back. So first it prints he is okay. Then moves the cursor all the way to the beginning and prints it. And then goes to new life. Okay? Let's break that one into three pieces too so we know what a... Whoop, 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 not that. No, no, no. There you go. I'm going to put that one in three pieces too. Okay. All right. Now let's run it. So we ran right down to here. So let's go. Uh, let's stop it and run it one more time. Okay, that, da -da -dum. okay, so that happened. And now we come over here and it says it is okay. But what happened was this. First, he's okay. And the cursor is standing over there. Now backslash R. Cursor comes to the beginning. Now it prints it and it and goes to new line. So that he is printed and it comes to new line. Okay? All right. Now, what is backslash T? Backslash T means move the cursor to the next tab position. When I put stars back to back like that, it looks very nice. You don't need the other one, but it's okay. So now you see it says press star, tap, star, tap. It's eight characters, right? So if I look at it, it's actually one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 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 13, and it keeps going like that. Are we okay? Are we okay? But tab is not eight characters. Take a look at the next statement. I have one, two, three, tab, four, tab, five, six, seven, eight, tab, and nine, right? Now take a look. So here, tab character is five, here is seven, here is four, here is seven again. Tab character doesn't have a specific number of characters. It goes to the next tab position. That is why I hate it in the code. Because when you move your code from computer to computer, tab size goes different, your code goes bananas. Okay? Backslash V and backslash F are for printing purposes, not displaying on a screen. V is a vertical tab, and, T, and F is a form feed, which means with a ver vertical tab, you go few lines below, below, and with a form feed, you literally throw out one paper and you go to the next one. So if you have, a, if you have five backslash Fs back to back on a printer, five page of papers are going to jump out. Okay, it essentially goes to the next time. Now, if I run this, the outcome is going to be nothing. As you see, if there is no, it's just put a question mark. It means I can't print that. Now, if you want to print backslash itself, that's two backslashes. If you want to print double coat, that's backslash double coat. You see this? Backslash double coat, it means I want to print a buckle. Double code, and this one means I want to print the backslash. Yes? Uh, how did you run it? Step step? F10. Debug. And read these. Step into F11. Step over F10. Step out, Shift 11. Uh, F5. This was continue or start debugging. And Control F5, start without debugging. If I stop the debugging, you'll, you'll see all those values change. So when I look at it over here, debug, this is debugging, this is without debugging, F10 step into, F10, F, F11 step into, and F10 step over. If I press F, let me show you what happens if you press F11. So I am on printf, so this just, I press F10, it jumps, it steps over printf and executes it, right? Then it steps over that one next, now I'll press F11, see what happens. By the way, that's printf. It actually went to the function printf and it's stepping into printf. And you don't want to see that because I don't think anybody will understand what the heck is going on in here. All right? All right, so stop.
And it actually went into standard input output header file. You did that? You see that? There you go. That's what you include. All right. Are we okay with this? Escape sequences? All right. <clears throat> Only uh, four more left, and we're going to have a break. The arithmetics of integer in C language Let's go through them quickly, understand what's going on. <clears throat> so A is getting initialized. Please look at the movement of this yellow arrow. It's standing over here. So A becomes 10, B becomes 25. Now, I press, you see it stops at int B. As soon as I press it, it completely escapes int C. What does it mean? The creation of a variable is not an executable command. You are telling the compiler, I want these three variables. They are not getting executed. It doesn't, it's part of prerequisites of your program. The executable action is initialization at this moment. Please mark my words. The difference between initialization and setting. <clears throat> Line 8 is setting C to a value. So I have an assignment over there, and I'm putting a value inside C, right? At line 5, I am initializing B to 25. I am not setting it to anything. So the assignment that you see at line 5 is an absolutely different thing than what you see at line 8. Line 8 is setting. Line 5 is initialization. What is the difference? When you create a variable like line 5, B, that integer will not have any value in it other than 25 as soon as it gets created. So B gets created with 25 in it. Where in line 6, C will get created with some garbage in it, unknown value in it. And after setting, that garbage at line 8 will be overwritten by the value that we want. So even if right after line 6, let's say in line 6.5, if I had C is set to C equals to 10, or C set to 10, still that wasn't initialization. First, C would have gotten created with garbage in it, and then overwritten with 10. Now, it doesn't may look interesting for you, or doesn't make any difference for you at this stage, but when you go to 345 or OP244, remember what I told you. That's initialization, the other one is setting. Two different stories, okay? Remember that. So now let's run it. So when we come to this one, A is 25, B is, uh, A is 10, B is 25. Multiplication has priority. Go read the priorities and see which one happens first. <clears throat> so first 25 will be divided, uh, multiplied by 2, that is 50, then added by 10, and the result will be 60, not 70. Okay? If you want that thing to get prioritized, you have to put parentheses. Because of that thing that I put over there, I want it to get prioritized. <clears throat> now you're going to have 70. Division between two integer values will not have partial parts. Therefore, 25 divided by 10 is 2, not 2.5. But to make up for it, we have an extra operation in C, lang in, uh, C language that is called modulus. Modulus gives you the remainder of the division. <clears throat> so the remainder of division between 25 and 10 is 5. Are we okay with this? I don't think I need to explain to anybody how the subtraction works. This is the part that is very important. Plus plus in C language is something very, very sneaky and tricky. If it comes after the variable, it means you want to do it after that statement, which means <clears throat> everything happens in here, then one will be added to B, which means C will be set to 25 first, then B becomes 26. Okay? Very important when it comes after. As a result, C will not have the value 
26. So C will have, so C will be 25. After the expression, the value of B will become 26. Now B is 26, right? When you put the plus plus before B, it means before the statement, I want that to happen. Which means that 26 first becomes 27, then it's going to be get set to, to C. As a result, you're going to have C as 27 and B as 27 at the same time. Okay? <clears throat> because of this fact, you got to remember, it's not cool to write something like this. It's, as a matter of fact, it's going to cause you lots of trouble at work. Don't write stuff like this. I don't know. Don't do stuff like this. This is just nuts, okay? Use this in a single thing. Make it very simple. Whenever you go, huh, it means everybody's going to go, huh, okay? Long time ago, it used to be nice and cool to write cryptic code. We used to sit over there and try to write a code that did something but no one, that no one could expect. We actually wrote code that like, in one line we wrote something that did something and nobody said, how did you do that? Like it was a cryptic thing. Now you do that, they're going to fire you out of the thing immediately. Because now it's important for others to understand your code and be able to maintain or debug it later on. If you write a cryptic code, you're out of there, and nobody will accept your code. Okay, remember that. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So essentially, if plus plus comes before, it means the action happens at line 19.5 before 20. When it comes after, it means it happens at line 18.5 after it. Okay. So remove the plus plus. Do whatever is happening, then do the plus plus after. Over here, do the plus plus, remove it, and then do it. Okay? Yes. Oh, no, no, this is okay. If you have one, it's okay. Because I can understand what happens over there. But if you put five different one of them, then it becomes confusing. Don't do that. Okay? It's nice to do it and see what happens. To have better understanding of how C and C language works in case some idiot does it and you have to debug it, right? It's good to understand it, but don't use it for practice. For sorry, don't do it for real coding. For practice is fine. Don't do it for uh, 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 real coding. The floating point arithmetics are exactly the same, but the difference is that. For floating point values, remainder doesn't make sense. When the, when the, when the division is happening, the division happens, let's all these things pass through. The, div, the division becomes absolute, so it actually tells you it's 2.5. Therefore, there is no remainder. It doesn't make sense. If I uncomment this part, you're going to get an error message that, hey, this doesn't work with floating point. And the rest of the stuff work exactly the same. I don't need to <clears throat> mention anything on that. It works exactly the same. The most important and, tr and uh, critical part of operators in C language are logical operators. Um, that we're going to go through it. Okay? So, first of all, all operators in C language, first of all, all operators in C language, how many people want to go for a break? Anyone wants to go for a break? Okay, 1%, good, enough for me. Let's go for a break and come back. <laughs> okay, it's not kind of a, let me just pause this, please remind me. As I was saying, the most important part of um, programming is the decision-making part, the part that you can actually check values with and uh, assess user entry and take different course of action depending on what the data is. That's essentially the definition of programming. Otherwise, it just becomes a formula. 
A formula is something that you put values and depending on the values, the outcome will be different. A program is that depending on values, different values, you can actually go different types of formulas, different types of actions. And that's the difference between programming and mathematics. With math, you just have a theorem, you go through it, you, you have the basic values and based on that you find the result. And that's it. In a, in a program, you design it to take different courses of action depending on what the criteria will be. So, to do that, we need specific operators to be able to perform such thing for us. These are logical operators. Logical operators, unlike regular operators, they can have only two outcomes, and that's it. A logical operator can either give you a result of true or false, and nothing else. True, <clears throat> sorry, false in C language is zero, and true in C language is not everything else other than zero, not one, okay? But if C language is giving you that, if you have an operation, a logical operation, returning a result, true is always one. It cannot be anything other than one. But if you are assessing a condition and you want to see if this condition is true or false, then zero is false, anything but zero is true. You don't understand what I'm saying now. In a few moments, we're going to get to it. Okay? Now, is equal to assignment operators. Checks the left operand with light operand, and accordingly, it's going to return zero or false. So if I run this beautiful program of mine three years later, when it runs, <clears throat> I'll see that A is 10. B is 25, C is garbage, and when I come over here, C has some garbage value, A is 10, and the value is 10. Is A 10? So this statement is true. Because its statement is true, the value 1 will go in C, and C will be 1. In <clears throat> C language, there is no true or false. It's 0 or 1, or 0 or not 0. Less than. If the left operand is less than right, it's going to be true, which in this case is 10 is less than 25. Less than or equal, so if it's equal or less than, it's going to be true, which is in this case is true. A greater than is the same. Could you please? Seriously, like, like kindergarten, I have to separate these two guys. Seriously. I'm doing it. All right. All right. So. If it's greater than the same, greater than or equal, so these are all the same. Not equal is something that I want to talk about, so if the two values are not the same, it returns true, okay? And again, equality could be both operands variables, it's the same. And this is where we are going to actually have a discussion and come to circuits, okay? That's a light bulb, okay? Happy light bulb, okay? That's a battery. These are two switches, okay? So for the light bulb to go on, both switches should be closed, correct? If any of them is open, the light bulb goes off, correct? All right? This is an AND statement, which means this is one condition, false or true, false or true. The only way an AND statement can be true is when both conditions are true. Now, if we look at this, I have A is equal to 10. That's true. A equal to B, is it? False. True and false. False, C will be 0. Okay? In an OR statement, the two switches are parallel, which means... That is not important. Okay. <clears throat> Which means for the light bulb to go on, only one of them needs to be on. Either this one, this one, or both. The only way the light bulb 
would go off is when they are both off. Okay? And that's the next statement. I have A set to 10. That's true. A set to B. That's false. True or false is true. So C will be true. Are we okay with that? All right. So we're going to do this, and this one. The next one is not. <clears throat> not negates the value of that is in front of it. If it's true, it makes it false. If it's false, it makes it true. Okay? For example, when we get to that, so let's print all those things out. Come on, so it's going to come over here, done, done, done. <clears throat> so A, 10, B, 25, the result will be false, right? Yes. Of course. Is it good now, like this? Is it? No? Okay. okay. <laughs> All right. All right, so C is set to not A grade. So this value over here is false. Not false is true. Therefore, it becomes true. Now, look at the next statement. I'm saying C is equal to not A. <clears throat> a is not a condition. A is a variable. What's the value of it? 10, correct? But when I put not in front of it, I am asking the C language to treat that value as a condition. And when C language wants to treat a value of it as a condition, it checks if it's not zero, it is true. A is 10, not 10 is not true. Therefore, C will be 0. The second one I have, not, not 10. Who's there? Not, not, who's there? Okay, so not, not 10, correct? Now, what is this 10? 10 is true. Not 10 is? Not false is? C will be? Oh, okay, so lots, many people by mistake say 10. It doesn't bring it back. It makes it true, okay? So that will be true. That becomes handy later on when we want to write QC programs. Okay, so that's that. And again, in here I have A and B. A is 10, B is 25, true and true. Because I am treating them as conditions now, then if the value is non-zero, it is considered true. So I have C is A and B. It means true and true. The result will be true. Is that a question? You have a question? No? <clears throat> two bars? That's or. Or. Okay, two uh, and an or. Yeah, two bars, they're or. Oh, you're not this one. This is not. I have two not. Hello, hello, hello. This is, <laughs> this is not or. This is, this is not. This is not not. This is or. Okay, okay. Because <laughs> I said two bars, I said, did you miss thing? Okay. And there you go. All right? All right, so that's that. And finally, casting, narrowed, and promoted. Understand what those are. Take a look at these values, okay? I have two integers and two doubles, okay? And when I print them, these are the values. <clears throat> I is 10, D is 2, 3, 4, point five, six, seven, eight, yada, yada, yada. All right? Okay, now, <clears throat> if I put an integer, a double value inside an integer, it gets narrowed down, which means the fractional part will be dumped, and whatever the integer part is, that's going to get into it. Okay? As a result, J will hold 2, 3, 4. If I put an integer inside a double, it will be promoted, which means it's going to have partial parts, but of course that partial part will be 0. So if I print that one out, 
after doing that, you will see that what happened? Did it just crash on me? Hello? Okay. Okay, as you see, that's 234, and E becomes 10.00000, right? But if you do not want to have extra variables, and temporarily you want to narrow or promote something, you can cast them. Casting means temporarily change the value of something. Now, as you see, I am putting a double in front of I, in, in parentheses, which means get the integer, promote it to a double temporarily. In here, I'm saying get the double, narrow it down temporarily to an integer. And that does the exact same thing. Okay? That is called casting. Casting does not affect the values that are inside the variables. The variables remain the same. So let me actually write this down over here like this. So essentially, if I have something like this after, so I'm going to put over here i. Well, that's too big of an i. I and in here will be D and I and D and I run this beautiful program of mine you'll see that after the casting I and D remain exactly what they were they are not going to change okay are we okay now <clears throat> If like one of the like if you want to drop a partial part of something, what do, what can you do? Like if I have a double, that double has a value, and I want to cut the partial part, what do I what can I do? Set it to cast of its own to that integer. So I can simply say D is set to int D. Right? So it's gonna so what's gonna happen? It's going to first narrow it down to an integer, drop the partial part, then promotes it to a double without a partial part. So if you want to wipe out partial parts of something, you can simply set it to a cast of its own. Easy, right? Just letting you know. Maybe I should write that over here. So I could do this. I could say D is set to int D. And okay, so if I do that, then this is what I'm going to have, right? So I'll actually drop the partial part if you want. It doesn't round it. Remember, casting does not round. If it was 9999, it would drop it to zero. Okay. Yes? If you wanted to put? Like, let's say you want like the third placeholder of the, after the decimal, you said point three, right? Mm -hmm. You just put like point zero. I mean, yeah, point, if you put point zero, it means no decimal point. It's going to round it. You want me to do it? See how it looks like? Sure. <clears throat> but it's not, yeah, so I, I could do this. So 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 now if I uh, you see that? I wanted to actually display the percent by itself. So I put two percents. You see that? So I printed that out instead of doing so. It says if I want to show D with percent zero LF, as you see, it rounds it up and puts it over there. OK? <clears throat> Are we OK? 
Questions now to here? Mm -hmm. Right after the printer, what if, if we uh, set them up before the printer? Then it's then you, you if then you're gonna have to. I just I wanted to put it before and after. That's why I did that. So there's a purpose. You're yeah, I I put this in sequence so so the things happen one by one so we understand. First I show what the values are. Then I, oh, you mean if I put these things on the top? Yeah. Bef it wouldn't make any difference over here because the values of D and I are not changing. Sure, I could do that. See, if D and I were changed over here, then it would have made a difference. But because it doesn't, it's not going to make the output any difference. I can print it after. It doesn't matter. You're saying if this printout was after line 10, yeah. would it make any difference? No, because these are not, D and I are not being modified. I, J and E are being modified over here. It doesn't make any difference. If D and I were set to something, then yeah, I couldn't do that. It's just, I just came that way. I couldn't put after. You can put it after. If you like, it doesn't make any difference. Yeah, my, my, my question was, uh, the sequence, does the sequence matter? Like, you see, after printf, just set J or double? In this case, it won't. But if you want to drink water, first you do this, then you sip, or you sip and then you do that. Yeah. See, when you are taking action on something, yeah. if the actions are dependent on each other, then sequence matters. These two actions are independent. Because they're independent, it doesn't matter which one comes first. None of them are affecting the other one. <clears throat> if you want to get out, first you open the door, then you get out. But if you don't do that, you'll first get out, then open the door, then you're going to bump your head, right? That's exactly the same thing. But if the two are not needed, are not related to each other, I don't know, typing something in a computer and opening the door, it doesn't matter which one happens first because they are not affecting each other in any matter. Sequence is only important if the two actions are affecting each other, okay? Or one is the result of the second one or the consequence of the second one. Okay? Are we okay? Okay, so I'm going to copy this to the notes because this is important. All right? All right. Uh, <clears throat> now, a quick startup on logic. I'm going to go a little bit into it and then. Uh, you're going to come back ready for your quiz for half of the things that I did not teach. Yes, ma'am. So, Only logic. logic. Yeah, don't worry about it. The style is the style. Will, you're going to show it to me when you write programs. So the style part, we're going to learn how to write code. It's, it tells you how to write code. And because you're going to hand into me workshops, I'll see them you're going to be tested 55,000 times on it every time you hand me a piece of code. So styles, we're not going to have any quiz on. But logic, we will. <clears throat> After the logic is done, I'm going to tell you on which parts. You're not going to do it, do it on whole logic, only two parts of it. Two and a half, maybe three. <laughs> okay, are we okay? All right. Questions down to this point? Yes. Uh, my question is a little bit unrelated, but still. Uh, okay. So when you, when you did the lab thing with the LB, at the end of the lab, uh, you demonstrated how you upload the file and everything, right? Mm -hmm. So are you going to do this in every lab? or? No, you want me to make a video out of it? Yeah, please. Okay. Uh, when you say upload, what do you mean? Uh, like on, on that thing, you know, where you copy paste to that and like. The, uh, yeah, when, when oh, when you, when you, to, 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 oh, to FTP something to Matrix and do it on Matrix and then, yeah, yeah. sure, I'll do, a, I'll do a video on that. Plus equal, that's sure, okay. <clears throat> okay, <clears throat> C has shorthanding for everything because 
uh, people who wrote it, they were like real programmers. That they, they wanted to shorten everything. They didn't want, they didn't want to spend lots of time writing. So <clears throat> that's why, because they wanted to write A is set to A plus one, A plus five, plus B. They said that's too 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 long. Instead, you can write A plus equal B. So the two are the same. Essentially, the second line is shorthand of, this, of the first one. Now it can work with multiplication, division, and subtraction. So A is set to A multiplied by B. You can say A multiply equal B. That's all. It's just a shorthand for that one. That's it. If your if your program is four lines, no, <laughs> okay. But if your program becomes fifty lines, then you have to clarify what you have done here, what you have done there. Yeah, especially I need comments on on parts that you borrowed from someone else, as citation. So if, if a piece of code you did not write, your friend wrote it, then you're gonna say this piece of code is written by yada yada yada. Okay, so I know for when I'm marking you, you're not gonna get. Plagiarized. <clears throat> Can I start teaching now? Oh my God, we are we are going out of time. This class, I, the other class, as usual, podium didn't work half of the class. So I was like, I thought this class is going to be longer than the other one, but eventually it's the exact same thing as the other one. So, <clears throat> but it's okay. Any more questions? And don't be shy. I'm not going to be mad. Any more questions? Okay. So a request was done to make a video on how to submit your work, okay, to, to write. I'm going to do lab one. I'm going to do lab one, put it on matrix, run it, and so on and so forth, okay? Yes, sir, back there. Uh, can you, can you read the A plus B plus something? Oh, plus, plus plus at the beginning at the end. What I said was this. <clears throat> when plus plus comes after B, this means this. C is set to B. B is B plus 1. So essentially, these two statements are the expansion of what you see up there. First, it sets literally. This is what happens. So when you see a plus plus, it means you want plus plus to happen after this. When plus plus comes before, this is the expansion of it. <coughs> First, B is equal to B plus 1. Then C is set to B. Got it? That's all. Same thing with minus minus. If minus minus comes after, the action of reduction happens after. If it happens before, it happens before. That's all. These are literally that. You can take this out and put this one in instead. This is the translation of that. Again, C people like to write things in a shorthand way so you can do quickly reduction and increase, in, uh, increase of uh, variables. All right, so are we okay? I want your attention, please. The more you listen now, the higher is going to be your mark for next quiz. And we have exactly 14 minutes.
Next time, I'm going to bring a water gun. Those people who talk are going to get wet, you know? <laughs> All right. Oh, what, are those, what are those things kids have with a, you know, it throws something. I don't know what they call it. Murf? What do you call it, the thing? Anyway, nerves? What do you want? <laughs> huh? Oh, yeah, I'm going to bring one of those. Yeah, exactly, with pallets. That's better, because at least you can, you can bruise your face a little. Anyways, <laughs> so we said the whole purpose, the whole reason that we use a computer is that the computer is fast. The computer is extremely stupid. It's very difficult to teach it what to do. But when it learns how to do it, it's quick. And because of that fact, because it can repeat stuff, it's good for us. So the very first thing we need to know is that the very f the, the most important thing that we need to know is that we need to be able to repeat things on a computer in an efficient way and a nice way. What is the construct for repeating things? In C language, you can start a block anywhere. So if I'm crazy enough, I could have something like this. I can start a block over here. And close the block over here. It's a block that doesn't belong to anything. So it's useless. A block's purpose is to pack certain things for a reason. For example, the block in front of the main identifies that all these stuff are inside the main. When main runs, that's the block. You can have blocks like this in front of anything, <clears throat> okay, any command, and it makes that blo block belong to the command or whatever you have or a function, okay? In this place, it doesn't make sense. Okay? <clears throat> but, in C language, there is a construct that can repeat stuff. That construct is called while. So you say while, and you put a condition in here, and you write a block in front of it. What, and it's exactly like the term, the term that you have in English. While that condition is true, whatever is inside the block of while will repeat. It's going to keep going. Okay? So, <clears throat> I can say over here, printf, hello, and for the condition, I'm going to put one. What does it mean? One is true, right? I'm going to say while true, say hello. It means it's going to say hello forever, right? So if I run this beautiful program of mine, this is what I'm going to get. Oh, that's bad. I'll tell you what's bad. Wait, 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 wait. Stop. <laughs> no, because I put it exactly the length. Of, I, I need to make it so it kind of hypnotizes you. That's better. Now, if you take a look at it for 10 minutes, you're going to understand the true meaning of life. <laughs> okay, so that's forever. It's going to keep going and going and going and going, right? All right, so, and it's never going to stop. I have to literally terminate the program, right? So, <clears throat> I can take advantage of this. So, what I can do... Let's actually do this. I'm going to say, so I can repeat anything that we have over there. So let's count things. I'm going to say int cnt for a counter. And I'm going to initialize that cnt to the 0. Then instead of saying print, uh, printing hello over here, I'm going to say uh, printf uh, percent %d. And I'm going to show the counter. But then I know how to add 1 to it. So what happens is that it's going to be 0 outside of the loop, comes inside, it's true, CNT is 0, makes it 1, repeats it. 1, 2, 3, and it's going to keep counting forever. Okay? 
So now if I have this beautiful program of mine, this is what I'm going to see. <clears throat> it's almost the same thing, but it's actually numbers being counted, right? Which I do not like. But wait a minute. I can actually do something. I learned something earlier. It was called, what does that thing do? Carriage return. It brings the cursor to the beginning of the line, right? So if I run this beautiful program of mine, then voila, I have a counter. And it keeps going and going and going. So are we OK? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Whoever, go. The percent, the, the space, it made like the whole thing. It didn't make. What happened is this. OK. I think you did the same. Yeah, yeah, I'll show you what happened. So let's take that out. Oh, percent D. I put some space over here, and, and I'm not going to control F5 it. I'm going to actually run it line by line. So what happens is this. Whoa. OK, let's make it smaller now, because if it's that big, we can't see anything. So let's make it 10. OK. All right, I'm just going to put it over here. So when it comes over here, it prints it, right? So 0, and then it goes. I, I need to have them all in the screen. So as you see, it prints and keeps going. As soon as it reaches to the end, it's going to be 9,000 years. It's going to go over there and come to the next line, right? And when it goes like, keep going like that, like this, it's very slow. But when it goes quicker, then this happens. It keeps printing, but because it's going around, it's going to become crazy like that. OK? Now what I did over here, instead of doing that, I said, don't put a space over there. Just put a backslash R so you stay at the same line. Just go back, which caused this thing to happen. OK? Are we OK with this? Yes, sir. It goes to the beginning. So Prince goes back. Prince goes so it doesn't go to the next line. Is there a way you can make it smaller? Yes. <laughs> but, but I'm not going to tell you what. <laughs> it, there is a way, but we'll talk about it later. OK? Uh, yeah, you just want, OK, sure. Yeah, you want to actually create a count that counts seconds and stuff, right? Sure. OK. So let's actually do this better. Now we can actually count things and print stuff. So <clears throat> wait a minute. I can actually do something. Um, what if I have a condition over here? I'm going to say while CNT is less than 30,000. If I run this, then it's, oh, shoot. I, didn't, I wasn't fast enough. Let's make it 8,000, 80,000. So control F5. So now it, it can actually go up and stop at 80,000, right? As soon as it gets to that one, the condition goes false, right? So I can actually count things to the middle. Like, wait a minute. Let's say I want to see what is the average of the test that we have. The test that you got, I want to know what is the average of the test of the class. How many people are in class? Say, I want to say it's 34, but let's say it's 10. <laughs> okay, I don't want to go like, okay. So if it's 10, I can actually make this counter to go up to 10, correct? Right? Now, whatever is happening over here happens 10 times. It was too fast. I couldn't go through. OK? So now that it's happening 10 times, I don't need the backslash R. I'm just going to put a backslash N. Now, in every count, I'm going to actually ask somebody to enter a mark. So it's going to ask me 10 times, right? So I'm going to say printf, please. Enter the mark, the quiz mark, right? Now, if I run this program, it's going to print that one 10 times. Zero, <laughs> that's one, two, three, four, five is coming because <laughs> it's printing and then it comes, right? So now I can actually get a mark. So I can say over here, scan 
let's put get an integer, make it an integer. So I'm going to say percent %d, and in here I'm going to get address of mark. What is mark? Oh, that's not there. What is mark? I'm going to put over here int mark. Now it's going to get 10 marks, correct? Yes. <clears throat> it starts from zero. Remember I said we like zero. Okay, so zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's a beautiful question. So the value of C and T starts from zero, and the maximum value of C and T inside the loop will be nine, because if it's 10, it stops, right? And 10 after that. So in C language, programmers like to start stuff with zero. Get used to it, okay? We start from zero, not one. Of course, when we want to show it to user, we show one, but we count from zero, okay? So now, if I run this, it's going to actually t get 10 marks from me. Very good. Zero, enter the mark. 30. Oh, that's 30. And then 39. And then 45. And then 34. And it keeps going like that, right? 10 is too much. Okay. What I'm going to do, I'm going to make it smaller. Just put three because we want to test it. We can make it more later on, right? Okay. So now that it's like that, now how do I find an average? How do we find average in math? We add them up, and then we divide to the number of the things that we are getting, right? OK, good. Because I want exact average, I'm going to put them in a double. Because if it's an integer, it's going to cut it, right? So now what I'm going to say over here, I'm going to say double average, or sum, sum of the whole thing, right? Now in here, I'm going to say sum plus equal. Mark. It means sum is equal to sum plus mark, right? But wait a minute. What is the initial value of sum? It's not. It's garbage. I should make it zero. This has to get initialized. Otherwise, it's going to have some big garbage value in it. So now I'm going to say over here, zero. Now, at the end over here, I'm going to have sum of all marks in there, correct? after the loop is done, so I'm going to say printf uh, the average of the quiz is percent, let's put 0.1 LF, I don't want to go, or 2 LF, I don't want to go too much, so, uh, and go to new line, and I'm going to put over here sum divided by 3, correct? Right? And whenever you have Calculations between two different types, the smaller size always get promoted to the bigger one. And the integer type always get promoted to the double, to the floating point type. So if it's a long and a float, it becomes a float. If it's character and integer, it becomes an integer. If it's long and a float, float. If it's character and a double, it becomes double. Okay? In this case, I have sum divided by 3, it's going to be a double value. So now <clears throat> I can actually run this program and it's going to get it one by one. 0, enter mark, 20, 34, 5. What did I do? What did I do wrong? No, wait, wait, wait. Oh, mark is integer. Oh, mark is integer. I put a wrong thing. Thank you. <clears throat> That's actually a good thing. That we learned. So 23, 34, 56, 45, whatever. 34.00 is the average, right? Now, wait a minute. <clears throat> 3, 3, and 3, correct? So let's put over here int number of marks. And I'm going to initialize it to 3. So I'm going to take this variable, and I'm going to put it over here, right? Correct? It's not going to make any difference, right? Right? Now in here, instead of doing that, I'm going to say printf. So if I run it, it works exactly the same. Right? Also, what the devil? It looks ugly. Why am I saying present the quiz mark? Present the quiz mark. I'm not going to do that. In here, I'm going to say printf.
please enter percent D marks. And I'm going to put a column over there, comma, and go to new line, and put over here number of marks. And then in here, instead of showing this silly thing, I'm going to show the counter, but we know that the counter starts from zero, right? Because it starts from zero, we're going to fool the user. We're just going to show one more, right? So it starts from zero, I'll, sh I'll make it one. When it's one, I'll make it two. When it's two, I'll make it three, right? So what happens over here, it's going to say, please enter three marks. <clears throat> and then it's going to prompt it, actually. I can say 23. I can say 34. I can say, it says the battery is dying. I can say, I don't know, 56. And ta-da, show me that one. Not only that, I can actually tell to the user, printf, please enter the number of students in class. Right? And then, scanf, if I can type it, percent %ld, and put it into the address of number of marks. Right? And get rid of that three. Now I can actually tell how many students I have and get the marks accordingly. So now if I run the beautiful program of mine, it's going to say, please enter the number of students in class. I'm going to say four. Now it's going to say enter four marks. Now I'm going to put 23, 45, da 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 and ta-da. It shows the outer. So as you see, programs are written just with a loop. <clears throat> now this loop is mother of all loops. All the other loops that you see in the thing can be implemented with this one. Okay? I want to do, I'm going to do a quiz the next time, the, the day after tomorrow, only on two things. If statements, there are different ones. Take a look at them. And while loop and nothing else. Because if you know the ifs and if you know the while loop, you can pass IPC 144 with A+. That's the only thing you need to know to be able to program. You don't need anything else. The rest is just to build, ov over, to build one thing over another thing and another thing and make things complicated. The, the guts of everything is only this. Are we okay? Yes, sir. Where is, did I put LD? I'm a bad boy. D. <clears throat> LD means actually long, but it doesn't matter. But D is fine. Percent D, okay? Okay. <laughs> Are we okay? Questions? Suggestions? Huh? <laughs>